So now let's get going and start our first Soundvision Unity scene. Quick disclaimer, if you want factual info on Unity and if you want good information about stuff in Unity, I'd highly suggest you head over to YouTube and check out Reiki's videos or get a Udemy course. They are awesome and they actually helped me a lot while developing this project. Now, with Unity open, just head over to the Assets folder and then for the scenes. And here I already created a folder called Video Tutorials. Enter that. And here I create another folder and I'll call that Fox. Into that folder, it's like Inception, just with folders. Hit create and then create a new scene. And I will also call this Fox. Double click that and it will open up our brand new scene. Unity will always add a camera and a first light source to your scene. The first things that I like to do when creating a new scene is going to the camera, select the camera and right click on this audio listener component and remove that to save some resources and save some trouble later. The second thing I always like to do just to be creative is go to the background color settings and set it to something like black just to make the scene my own. Next we have to add an empty game object and I right click in the hierarchy and say create empty and a game object is basically a container, can contain scripts, you can move it around, do whatever you like. I reset this to transform 000. That's what Unity programmers like to do to keep things orderly. I will rename this game object and call it PD Backend. With this PD Backend game object selected, I add a component. And this component is a class that Chikashi actually wrote. And this class makes the connection between pure data and Unity possible. It looks very sparse, but it does an incredible job. The next thing that I will add is a 3D object. So the first thing that we actually see in our scene, I have a little cube here, I can still move it around. And if I go to the game view in Unity, you see that we have our gray cube here. And what I want to do now is change these rotation values or these scale values with a script. So I can change it with my mouse, but I actually want to send values into this rotation here so that it gets moved by my voice. By the way, Unity will always add a box collider with a new cube and I always delete these just to save some resources. The next is I add a component and that is called level bind. And this is the actual script that gets the level data from the PD backend script. But this level script right now doesn't know which PD backend to look for. Very, very important point, by the way, there can only ever be one PD backend script per scene. If you add another PD backend script, it will just go bonkers, but you also only need that one PD backend script because it always analyzes all the 16 audio channels in different ways. So now selecting our cube, we have PD backend dragged in our slot. Just remember that we have to have the PD patch actually running in the background. So I search for the analyzer patch, A and A, here's the analyzer, double click that and it opens. And just make sure that the PD patch is actually not running in the background. If we'll see that here, on channel 16, I have movement here in this fader, and this is actually the value that I want to send over into Unity. So I switch that off again, minimize that, select our cube, and select channel 16, and hit play. It automatically switches into game view, and now I can select lock level, and you will immediately see numbers appearing down here. If you go to the console, this is a row of numbers. This is actually the loudness values that we get from PD for this channel. If I'm quiet, the numbers get lower. If I talk, the numbers go around like 78 to something, 60 to 78. But now what I actually want to do is, I, for example, want to change the size of this cube via script, or I want to change the rotation. So how do I do that? By the way, very important information, if I leave play mode now, it will reset my cube. And this can be very annoying. And I'll show you a trick to go around that in a minute. So the script to root values coming out of these PD bind scripts to the actual transform is called KG row bind. Now, why is that? Little story. During my fellowship at the academy, I found this guy online who does incredible stuff within Unity. And he just does uh, bonkers visuals with Unity, real-time visuals. He does visuals for other artists and he's just amazing. Check him out, Kijiro Takahashi on Twitter. And 
in February, he actually updated a project called LASP on GitHub. And he makes basically all his stuff open source available for free. You can download it, mod it, put it into your project. If you go to the license agreement here, it actually says like, we can, without restriction, use, copy, modify, merge, publish, distribute, sub-license and or sell copies of the software. So this was perfect. And I told Naoto that I would like to have part of his project in our project. This was the binding, which basically makes it super easy to root these values from one script to transformation or a lot of other values. So Naoto came in and reverse engineered this script into our project. This is how it looks has an input minimum and an input maximum. I'll show you later what that means. And I'll add a property binder here. And I'm looking for a vector three because I want to change X, Y, Z up here. And now it looks for a target and I drag the transform in here. And then I can actually change a property. And what I am looking for is the local Euler angles. Welcome mass. <laughs> you will have to deal with a lot of mass if you want to go into sound vision. And how this actually works is if this is sending a value between zero and a hundred, which it is, then at the minimum, when it sends a value close to zero, it will send out these values here at zero. So for X, it will send out a zero, for Y, it will send out a zero, for Z, it will send out a zero. At one, in this case, it would send out a zero, one, and one. What I want to do now is I want to just rotate the cube, sorry, just rotate the cube around its Z axis. So I want to make this little bob, bobbing motion here and let's look what maximum values we want so maybe minus 10 plus 20 or exactly the wrong way around plus 10 minus 20 plus 10 minus 20 on the z-axis i don't want to change these other values so i set them to zero and zero and now if i start the project nothing would happen because there's still no connection between the pd level bind and the kajiro bind script i have to establish another connection here so i hit plus in this level changed method and drag the Kijero bind script into this slot here where it says none object. And then I have to select an actual function in the Kijero bind script that I want to send my values to. So this is the Kijero and we call it on value received. And now everything should be set up. <laughs> Let's cross our fingers. And if I start the project now, I get like strange errors, but let's just ignore this. And now you see, that this cube is moving according to my voice. I could actually go and set this to something else. So maybe I want to not rotate this cube, but I want to change the scale on the Y axis. This is very easy. I just go in here, select the property that I want to change, and it's actually the local scale. And I change the value at one to something higher than zero, change the Z axis to zero, zero, because I don't want these values to change. Actually, I don't set them to zero, zero, because if uh, the scale will be at zero, zero here, there will be no cube because it's just scale zero. I actually want the scale to be one, one, one for value zero and one, ten, one for zero, uh, value one. <laughs> Set the scale back up here as well. And now if I start this, it will actually become bigger and respond to my voice. But maybe now you want to make something more interesting than making a cube bounce. And the way I like to do that is go on the internet and look for interesting meshes to play with. And I found a little trick. I like to go to Thingiverse because there are a lot of hobbyists making great models of things and giving them away for free. And I searched here for a fox and I found this very beautiful blue fox. Thingiverse is actually a site where you can download projects that you can print on your 3D printer. Let's quickly go in here and check out who made this because it's really, really beautiful. And this was made by Slavic in 2015 and he released it as a Creative Commons license and says it's for non-commercial use. So this is fine for us. I went ahead and downloaded this. And this is actually an STL file, which I suppose you can use for your 3D printer, but I had to bring it into Blender and actually export it as an OBJ file, which Unity can work with. And now the next thing I want to do is bring it into my Unity scene, make a new folder, always keep everything tidy, open that and drop in my little fox. Here it is. And if I add this fox to the scene now, 
you will actually see nothing because this fox is super huge. So what I do then is go to scale and set it to 005. 005. 005. And there's our tiny fox. And now we just have to do the process that we had done for the cube again really quickly. Just add the PD level bind, add Kajiro bind script, hook the Kajiro bind script up to the level bind, select Kajiro bind script on value received, add a property, add a vector 3, or add the Euler rotation. Interesting, you can also just select an Euler rotation directly. Select the transform, it's just a different way of doing the math basically for rotation values. Then I select the component, the transform, select the property local rotation, and I say at value zero, I want no rotation. And at value 100, I want, I don't know, what is a good value, maybe 100. I think this is in degrees now. I just forgot to hook up the PD level bind script to the PD backend. By the way, Unity just changed the order of these objects. This has something to do with this being a prefab. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we just go with it. So I just hooked up the PD backend to this. Select channel 16. Start it up. And now we have the little fox banging his head back, which is the wrong direction. And the cube next to it, which is going up and down. Cool. Uh, maybe let's change that. I think this uh, Kajiro bind script doesn't like when I change values in real time. Oh, it does. So 100 is a little much. So maybe let's put minus 30 as our maximum. And now the fox is banging his head like crazy. We can always just select a different input as our audio source. So for example, if I start a kick drum here. And for the fox, I select channel one where my kick drum is at you see that the fox is banging his head with the kick drum and uh, my snare drum is on channel two here so this works we have our cube changing the size and we have our fox banging his head now what we changed a lot of things during play mode, but we want to take over our changes into edit mode. Here comes a very important trick. Select all the objects and do control copy. Go out of play mode. Delete all the objects in the scene that you just edited and copy them back in. That way, all these connections will have carried over from play mode into edit mode. It's a strange thing from Unity. I don't know anything about it. Please tell me why. Unity does that, I have never found a good answer for this. Just trying it again, when I start the scene now, everything should be still running. Yeah, great. The problem now is in the game view, we don't have a really interesting angle for this scene. So what I then like to do is find an interesting angle in my editor. Maybe like that. And then I select the main camera here and hit Control Shift F. And that will actually change the main camera that I just selected and take it to the view that I just had in the editor. So now when I head over into game view, this is the actual view that we have. And I think that looks pretty good. Now, before we go out of play mode, again, select all the objects, hit copy, go out of play mode and copy the objects back in. So yeah, this is how you set up the very first scene. I hope these next videos will get much shorter because we have this basic scene set up and we can just go from there. Bye.